Thanks for joining us today for our uh, video on how to harvest quail humanely. So we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> This video covers harvesting quail humanely. Easy tips. Well, good morning, family. Today's one of those happy days and sad days at the same time because today we're going to show you how we're going to harvest our uh, quail for meat as humanely as possible. But um, you do tend to get attached to them a little bit when you raise them all the way from an egg you know, to this day, and we've, this, this isn't our first uh, harvest, but we've, we've harvested all the roosters and we're down, we only have eight hens left and we're gonna harvest them today because we got 44 new quail coming into the, into the hutches and, and they're ready to move in. So we're gonna take these girls out and put in the new, new breed, this, this new flock. So, um, and uh, we're gonna keep back 20 of these that are um, constantly producing eggs and um, uh, meat for us. So let's get started. Well, we got the hard part done. That's bringing the birds outside and catching them out of the, out of the hutch and getting them out here in the little transport uh, carrier. We've got them out here, and um, this is a this is kind of a hard thing to do for uh, first timers. Our first time was a little harder. Uh, this is about the third time I've harvested these birds, so I'm getting kind of used to it now. But it's still kind of hard to do. But uh, we always like to say a little prayer uh, before we do this part and uh, thank the Lord for it. So let us pray. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for these birds that you've given us, this bounty of beautiful meat. We, um, we have tried to be the best um, steward of your animals all the way through their life, the best we possibly can, and provide the best life they could have in captivity up until this day. And um, now we thank you for this food that you're going to provide for us and, and, and um, trusting them in our care. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So we're going to try to do this as humanely and quickly as possible. Um, this is a graphic video, so if you don't want to watch anything that has anything to do with dispatching an animal or blood or any of the things that go along with cleaning an animal, uh, this would be the time to turn the video off. And go to and go to watch another one of our videos because this is this is just to help folks learn how to do it that's never done it before and would like to see. So it's not for everybody. But anyway, let's get started for you and those of you that have not tuned out the video and show you the, the things that we're gonna use. I use these poultry shears. Let me get a good close-up shot of this. I guess the camera's got a good focus on it, don't it, baby? Let me check. Okay, yeah. It's That's good. It. Mm -hmm. They're spring-loaded, so see, they're very sharp, and they got a, a big grip on them like this, so I can get a lot of quick pressure. And that's important when I uh, dispatch the bird because I put her little head in here around her neck and I can do it quick and it's instant death. There's no suffering and it's the most humane way I can do it. Um, I don't like to pull their heads off or snap their necks or anything. I, I just like to make it quick and get it over with. So these right here are very good. I can also use this when I'm cutting the uh, backbone out and snipping off the legs and wings. This is, this is an excellent investment. They really don't cost that much. Mm -hmm. I think we have this on our uh, storefront on our Amazon link on the back of our channel. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get you a set of these, um, go use our link because we, we would appreciate you supporting us in that way. But anyway, here's the scissors that I use, the shears. We also have... Um, a unique tool here that I made. Can you see this okay? Mm -hmm. 
This this was one of Nancy's one of these little shrimp forks or something, mm -hmm. little cock, shrimp cocktail fork. Anyway, she donated one, and <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know she donated it until the next day when we were cleaning them. She goes, "That looks like one of my forks." Well, now it's a lung scraper. So what I did is I took the tongs of the fork and I bent them up a little bit more than 90 degrees. So when I open the chest cavity, Nancy takes this right here and she goes in and she scrapes out those lungs out of those rib cage. And she'll show you how she does that. She's quite good at it. But you want to be able to get any of the uh, uh, organ material that's left inside the chest cavity, you want that out as clean as possible. So this is what the, the tool that she uses to do that. The next thing we have is just a, it's just a, uh, can you see this okay? Mm -hmm. It's nothing but just a bucket of water, a stainless steel container full of water and ice. So whenever we clean the bird, we want to cool that meat down as fast as possible. So as soon as it's uh, cleaned and gutted and everything's all off of the bird, we wash it off in the, in the spigot here and we get it right into that ice bath and get that meat temperature down as quick as possible so it don't get spoilt. So that's how we're gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna do th this end over here and I pass the, the carcass over to Nancy and she cleans it out, washes it out and um, dips it in ice. At that point, we'll um, get them over into some uh, Ziploc bags and we'll put them in the refrigerator for about three days and that gives them time to tenderize a little bit before we vacuum seal them and uh, freeze them for later and um, of course we always make a meal off of the first batch before we freeze them so we'll have quail in about three or four days from now we'll, we'll have a quail dinner and the rest of them we'll put into the freezer so let's get started here's what i do as i get the bird and I get her wings under my hand like this so she's not, you know, f freaking out and getting all n nervous. And I get her calm as I can, see? She's pretty calm right there. She's not trying to fight me. Then I take this, the shears and I try to come up behind her. I get it around her neck and I quickly cut it right off. It's an instant death. And what I do is I let her bleed out right here and it takes her a couple of minutes to quit twitching and uh, the nerves are still trying to fight it. And it gets all that blood out of there as much as I can. So let me let her bleed out and then we'll take it to the next step. Okay, the bird's through twitching and um, I think it's ready to go to the next step. First thing is I do is I take this wing right here and I get as close to the body as I can and I snip that wing right off of there. Then I do it on the same thing on the other side, close to the body. Then I take the legs just above the, the little knee joint right there. Cut those right off. Then I take right up here at the neck, I make a little small incision on the skin. and I peel that skin back. It's very soft, so it's, it peels pretty easy. So it goes right down the breast. Then I get over here to the drumstick, and I take her leg and I push it back through, see? I push it from the other side until I can get my finger like behind the back of her knee, see? And I can pull that skin right through, see? Do the same thing on the other side. Get that leg, push it through. See how I pushed it through? Then I grab it, get my finger underneath there. Pull that skin right off of there. Then I take the skin off the top. Go right over her head, right down her back. All the skin comes off. A couple of little feathers left. Okay, then I like to go right here on this little tail section right here. I like to get that off. It's kind of oily. So I get rid of that. There's the bird. Now, right here at the neck, I hold 
the breast down in my palm, hold her legs together like this, and get a little egg in there, get that egg out. Okay, I got her like this, and I go right down the backbone, right on one side, close to the backbone as I can get, then I go on the other side the same way. And I can grab a hold of all these guts up here at the top and grab a hold of the um, backbone at the same time with my thumb and I can pull all that out. Let's see. And she's pretty clean now. At this point I pass her over to Nancy and she'll fine tune her. Nice piece of breast meat. So Hollis hands it to me like this. So my first thing is to get any other uh, parts in there that's part of the intestines there, anything like that. This will loosen it up so I could just take it off. It's a really good trick. I also take all the extra um, feathers off and any dark spots I see I don't like them I take that off try to leave the fat on there now I wash it See, you want to leave some of the fat as much as possible. It's all been organically fed, non-GMO food. It's the best nourishing of your body. Well, we got all the girls clean, processed, and ready for the refrigerator. The next step is put them in some Ziploc bags for about three or four days and then quail for supper and quail in the freezer. So it's part of the homestead life producing 90% of our own food, including meat. This is a great uh, meat source for small homesteads. Uh, it's a, it doesn't take long to produce the meat. They're easy to clean, they're easy to feed, they're, they're eat low maintenance, and uh, it's a rapid turnaround. So, you know, you know, six weeks, six or seven weeks, eight weeks, you can harvest your birds and just keep an eight week cycle going and having a, a steady flow. We have 44 or more birds in the brooder right now I'm fixing to bring and put into the um, to the hutches. So in four weeks, we'll be able to do this again. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we appreciate you watching. I know it wasn't the most pleasant video um, for a lot of folks, but I'm sorry. I uh, hope we haven't offended anyone. It's just part of the homestead life and how to process your own meat. And uh, we just wanted to help you see it for yourself in case you're thinking about doing it and you've never done it before maybe gives you an idea of what to expect but anyway we thank you for watching if you want to be a part of our homestead family please subscribe and uh, be a part of our channel with us as we bring the rest of the homestead to life in the days ahead we're looking forward to sharing our many videos with you in the future so until me and nancy see you next time always remember by I his hands we are fed, fed. Give, give us lord our, our daily bread, bread. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day.